Why does the Negro leave the South? <laughs> Indeed, you would feel a large part of the answer if you could be on this train, in this Jim Crow car, and share for one night the longing of these people to reach the line that divides Dixie from the rest of creation. As soon as I got on that train, I felt free. Sure, I was sitting in the Jim Crow section up front where all the coal and dust rose up, got in the windows and ruined my clothes. But the chugging of the train couldn't hardly keep up with the beating of my heart. Just behind us is a car for white people, where they can stretch out and rest their heads. They have paid exactly the same fares as we have. Some of these colored men are in the service of the United States, summoned from the far corners of Texas to fight for democracy in Europe. This is certainly a good preparation for trench warfare. We were hoping we'd see the Mason-Dixon line. I thought it would look like a line of trees with some kind of white mark in the middle. Then someone said, the bridge ahead was in. We were north now. In Chicago, there were no signs that said color folks on one side, white folks on the other. When we got off the train, everybody went through the same door to the same waiting room. There was no sneaking in the back way to Chicago. The station was beautiful, but noisy and frightening too. Either you found someone you knew, or you went to one of the organizations that helped settle newcomers. Right near the station was the Loop, Chicago's white business district. And if you went east, it was all Lake Michigan, so huge it could be an ocean. It was strange to pause before a crowded newsstand and buy a newspaper without having to wait until a white man was served. And yet, because everything was so new, I began to grow tense again. I knew that this machine city was governed by strange laws, and I wondered if I would ever learn them. Richard Wright. Dear Mama, when I got on the streetcar and saw colored people sitting by white people, I just held my breath. I thought any minute now they would start something. Nobody noticed. Now, you know I'm not crazy about mixing with white folks, but if I have to pay the same fare, I want the same accommodations. This is a real place for Negroes. I miss you terribly, Willa. To my dear friend, if I had the money, I'd go back south and dig up my father's and mother's bones and bring them up to this country. I am 45 years old, and. These six weeks I have spent here are the first weeks in my life of peace and comfort. And if I can't get along here, I mean to keep on going. But no matter what, I'll never go back. 